click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about multi-version schemes or multi-version concurrency controls. First we will talk that what is the difference between a multi-version data set, then we will introduce this multi-version concurrency in controlling the serializability, the recoverability and the cascadelessness. <music> And also we will see that how we can modify this multiversion scheme to have a better approach to use this one where we are having only the validation phase and also the locking based protocol implemented to it. Multiversion concurrency control supports that we are having not a particular set of data that is waiting for it but a set of data that means a particular set which is having waited for the read operation and has been written for some transaction that has been performed on a schedule that means we are performing no wait for and ready or this read operation now whenever there is a read operation that wants to read and data item then we are having all versions of this data that from which we can choose that which data we may need to read. That means there are possible of versions between the data that we can choose from. Now in this type of concurrency control on a multi-version of data, there is the validation of the write queue that we are performing and after that there is no possibility of waiting for and read only data item queue because we are not ready for the increased overhead of the waiting for performing in the read queue. Because the read queue is the simplest operation and only the possibility that it is reading an obsolete value needs to abort it. Now we will perform this multi-version concurrency control in such a way that we will see that there will be no obsolete beta that we can read. Now we can have in this multi-version scheme that each write queue gives a new version of this data item queue. So now we can say that the write queue provides a new version on queue and the read queue does have to choose from this set of queue i to this queue n. So now we can have the read queue that is performed on this read operation on data item queue that the new versions of every write operation it can be in QI, QJ, Q then and such that it can choose the read from this data item set. So now we are having different versions. So if there is an older version then we can just delete the version not just deleting or waiting for the read operation. Now we will talk about the multi-version timestamp ordering. To introduce between the protocol, we first note about the timestamps that is associated with these multi-version schemes. Now in this multi-version scheme, before a transaction starts, it associates an unique timestamp that is a static unique timestamp with every transaction TI denoted by TSTI. So now we can say that TSTI is an unique and also static that means every version will have a new TSTI and also they are static that means once they have started the execution of a transaction it will not be changed for that version of that transaction next is a queue which is a sequence of variables QI to QN now for this queue we have QK considering three of these timestamps. Now the content QK support that for that instant of the version QK what is the value for this data item Q. So it is value for QK. That means the version of this queue. W timestamp QK. As we know that each write operation gives a new version of Q that will be entered this sequence of Q. So now the W timestamp QK supports for the write operation or the time of the write operation that has created this QK version on this Q. So it is the SI that belongs to the write QK. 
Now finally is the read timestamp. So this is the largest value that performed a transaction on this QK, a read operation. So it is the maximum of the read QK belonging to a transaction. So now we can say that W timestamp Q, if it is performed, then it will generate a new version of this Q. And also the R timestamp Q will be recorded and updated if the read timestamp Q is less than this TSTI. So that we can say, so now we can say that the maximum of this TSTJ and R timestamp QK and it is containing the content of QK which is read by the transaction TJ here and the R timestamp Q goes for this TSTJ. So now we have defined the timestamps. Now we will go for this protocol. Now that we have defined the concurrency control mechanism by this transaction, it ensures the serializability and also the conflict serializability. So now if TI issues read and write operations in both the cases, we will have the following conditions. Now if TI is issues a read U, then it will go for finding this content of QK into stored by this version of Q. Now again it will perform this read operation. As we can say that this multi-version schemes are especially controlled as the versions of this Q. That means it will read only the latest version of Q that has been performed right by this transaction. Now if T chooses a right operation then it's possible of the two conditions that it is writing an obsolete value or it is writing the new value. So it is the TSTI less than our timestamp queue. That means the read operation has already been there though needed to rewrite it. So now we can have that if then we need to roll back TI and reject the write operation. Now if TSTI is equal to W timestamp QK, that means there is a value that is being written and we have to overwrite it. So now the multi-version schemes allow to overwrite it because it will generate a new versions of Q which either can be read or can be used by some other transactions. So we are not ignoring or aborting the transactions on that basis that the value that is writing, it is already being overwriting and value and which has not been read by any data item because it will be a newer version of the data item. Previously, the written data will be the older version of the data item. Now, if it is not less than our timestamp queue and not also equals to the W timestamp queue, but it is greater than this R timestamp QK. That means the data that has been read and we are actually writing a new version of the data. So if it is greater than our timestamp K, then we will add a new version of Q to the sequence of Q. So now if it is greater than our timestamp QK, then it will create a new QK. Now, if we go for this rule 1 and rule 2, the rule 1 is very clear because there's no wait for the read operation. If the content is ready, then it will just read the operation. But the second option that we have defined as this timestamp ordering, we are about to force a board and transaction if the write is being doing too late. That means the R timestamp queue has already been performed and there is no need to write it because the writing has been performed that has been a past long for this read operation. So now we are just ignoring the write operation by aborting the transaction and to restart the operation so that we can do it in a meaningful manner. Now versions that are no longer needed are removed from this sequence of Q based on these conditions. Number one, if there are two items say QI and QJ in this sequence of Q, whose we can say that the W timestamp Q for both this QI and QJ is less than a new timestamp Q that is the read timestamp Q. That means QK is a newer version and we no longer need this Q on this QI and QJ because the data has not been read and a new value that is being written by Q, we want to read that Q now. So we will delete and remove this data item versions from the sequence of an data and we will add this QK as a result. So now we can say that the read request will never fail and we will have an QK based on this new data set item. So now my QK is having greater than W timestamp QI in such a way that the QI has been performed first and then we have generated QK. 
However, this multi-version time scan sharing, we will have no cascadelessness because there is only the rights and the end of the transaction is, is about to commit. So there is no need for the cascade rollbacks. And also it is free from this deadlock handling. But there is one, one pressure problem associated with this type of multi-version concurrency control. The first one is reading and data item needs to update the add timestamp field. Now it needs two potential read data updates, one for this QK addition, that is a newer version of Q, another is the addition of the add timestamp field. So the version needs another one that we can perform on this uh, validation based protocol protocol. Now we can say that the protocol which is being based on this protocol can suffer from another disadvantage. So the first one is the potential updation. Now it conflicts through the rollbacks rather through the weights. We have seen in the second option that the conflicts were happening because there were too late writes for this rollbacks. So we are having the rollback as a problem and the solution to this problem is an abortion to the system. Rather than waiting for this write and this performed value which we can read after that. So now there will be some modification which we will lead to multi-version two-phase locking protocol to give us the idea that we are solving this addition problem and also the conflicts through the weights, not the rollbacks. Now the multi-version protocol advantages with this two-phase locking protocol that it divides a transaction in two phases. One is a read-only transaction, another is an update transaction. Now the update transaction performs this rigorous two-phase locking protocol. That it provides two phases one is for acquiring the locks and then rename the locks until and unless the transaction has been committed that is the shrinking phase of this locks now it uses the multi versions in this way that it uses a counter which we will introduce as an TS counter. So whenever there is a commit processing, that means the end of this locking phase and start of the sinking phase, we will add and increment this TS counter. So this plus sign denotes that we are adding one to the TS counter to denote that we have performed at one read operation. So this is one way to avoid the updation that is in potential one of this R timestamp Q. Now if it is a read only transaction then it will be initiated with this TS counter before the transaction has been started. So for the read only we can have this TS counter that is the start of TY. So now we can have the counter that is associated with this particular TI initiated read phase as the part of this locking phase. So now it will increase the counter whenever there is a shared lock that is available for the reading. So now the read queue will return the largest of the read TIs, that means whichever has the largest read on a data item queue for a particular transaction TI, it will return that transaction's timestamp to read the value. Now for again the updation and the read only phases, we will consider the locking mechanism. Now whenever is a read only operation, we exclusive on a shared lock that we can have on that particular data item queue. Now when we have a shared queue, that means we are performing TSTI, which is less than TSTG. That means the transaction TI has already performed this read and that has been a shared lock on data item queue, which can be performed by a transaction TJ, which appears next to TY. Now when it produced at the right operation, then it must acquire an exclusive lock on queue. Now the exclusive queue goes for that if there is a transaction TI that has already been written an operation and there is a data item queue, now a TJ appears, then it check for the TS counter. First it says this TS counter to infinity. Now after it checks each TI that is less than or greater than equals to this TS counter. So whichever has the maximum value, we will choose that. So the TI and TJ, if it is having the largest W timestamp queue, then we will have that using the TS counter. 
Now, whenever it has performed this write operation, then we can say that we are having a particular TS counter that is added up with plus one and also created a new version of the queue that is added to the sequence. So now my QI to QN value will have QN plus one that is one extra value that has been created by the write operation. So now my QN plus one suggested that it goes for this plus TS counter. So the plus TS counter will update the value of this counter that is the W timestamp Q with incremented by one. So now when TJ wants to perform an read operation that has been added with this QI to QN and QN plus one, so the TJ can see the update on TI. And now TJ can perform any read on this versions QN plus one. So TJ can perform read operation on this QN plus one data item version of that Q. So now this TJ and TI never waits for this read logs. That means the shared log that was we has, that we have previously described that if TSTI is less than TSTJ can now also be performed without any logs. Now for the updation requirement, we need this exclusive lock on a particular element E so that we can perform this following protocol to have achieved this write operation. So this two-phase locking protocol advantages that is attached with these multi-version schemes can assure us that we are having such a way that a deadlock free, conflict serializable, view serializable, and as well as for the cascadelessness on any schedule that we can have for this multiple purpose on a multi-version scheme. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.